everyone. I am Katherine Ayers Wickenhauser, Director of Communications for Direct Trust, and I'm so pleased to have with us today interoperability hero, Dr. Karen Smith. Hi, Dr. Smith. Would you please introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit more about your practice? Thank you so much. Um, my name is Karen Smith, and I'm a family physician of 30 years. I practice in Rayford, North Carolina, which is a small rural community at 20 miles south of Fort Bragg or the Fayetteville area. And we see patients from newborns all the way up to our oldest patient was 107 years old. And we take care of um, the whole family. So it's really been a pleasure, but I've learned a lot over the course of time. So Dr. Smith, as a solo practitioner, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the changes or evolution that you've experienced and the overlap between medicine and technology? The changes that we have seen in healthcare in regard to technology is amazing. Our practice started off with technology. We were considered as an early adopter of electronic health records use. And so back in the year 2003, people were coming out with different ways of providing care. It definitely wasn't paper and pen anymore. And we were able to connect in with some of the best EHR vendors. And we introduced that um, technology just from that standpoint, 2003. As we were moving through, we recognized that we, we still needed a great deal of efficiency in terms of making sure that the technology was not getting in the way of our patient care. And all of the different strategies that came on board, we were looking at them like patients were able to now go online that they could put their own health information in. And we were able to extract that information into the system. And so that was a key, making sure that our patients were engaged with the technology, increasing the efficiency. And by doing that as a solo independent rural physician, it allowed access because we could actually see more people, but we were making technology work for us as well as a quality of care. We never want to diminish quality of care as we're introducing new concepts into the practice. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that. I love that idea about um, looking at what you have and thinking about the evolution and, and being an early adopter and, and um, you know, just the evolution of the practice. And so I understand that there's something now that you're involved in as an early adopter called Health Leads. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? One of the things that we um, came to found out that as all of this technology was evolving in terms of healthcare, what about our community? How well were we connecting with the people that we take care of? Mm -hmm. And we also found that there was a lack of just recognizing people of diverse backgrounds and making sure that we have redesigned primary care for health equity. Because when we are not taking care of people and the, where they work, play and live, and we're only looking at the patients when they come into the exam room, we miss all of the social determinants of health that interfere with their care. But from the technology side of it, as telehealth was rolling out, even with our COVID pandemic, we found that not all people had access to telehealth. Not all people had smartphones. So what could we do to actually meet where people were living and still be able to have that connection? And that is one of the key components of the health equity project, making sure that we have paid attention to the diversity, not only of individuals in their culture, but even what access that they have in regard to technology. Sure, and, and you mentioned redesigning the practice and maybe could you tell us a little bit more about that? I think so many people are interested in um, perhaps what we've been doing for a long time hasn't been working and trying some new and innovative, innovative models. So what does redesigning the practice look like? Redesigning a practice, actually we start off with what do patients want? And so we literally start with a focus group and we ask our patients, what do you want when you come to see the doctor? Mm -hmm. I know what I want when I go to see the doctor. Basically, I go in and get my needs met and go home, right? Well, you know, that's not always the same for every patient. And when I'm making a recommendation or advising someone, 
they need to be able to get advice that makes sense with their life. For example, dietary changes for individuals who have diabetes, for me to make recommendations for them to eat foods that they don't even have access to because they don't have a local grocery store that has fresh fruits and products, then that advice would not work. So what else can we suggest? How other um, strategies can we introduce in terms of what their resources are? Mm -hmm. And when we re redesign a practice, that's what we're talking about. Making sure that the patients are engaged and that the practice is going to now redesign itself so that it can connect them with the patients. For a long time, healthcare came and it seemed like one size fits all. Patients walked in and it was the standard. They met with the front desk person. Um, they met with the MA, the medical assistant. We go into the exam room, we provide their care, we give them advice, we send a prescription to the pharmacy and they leave, right? No, it can't be that way. We need to be able to understand, can that person even buy that prescription? Does their healthcare plan even provide for that medication? Can they actually eat the foods that we reckon, recommend for them to have? And so now we have to redesign healthcare for the patient, not us say, well, this is the way it is, take it or leave it. Now, even in Burger King, you get it your way, right? And so <laughs> that's what healthcare has to be able to do. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to meet patients where they are if we expect good outcomes in care. And I love that Burger King analogy too, because I think one of the, the trends that we've seen in, in healthcare, and there's been a big emphasis recently on patient access to information. And in general, as consumers, you know, we want something and we want it right then, right? That's why we go through the, the Burger King drive-through. Um, but I think there's been this, this balancing act that we've been trying to talk about too in the industry. So maybe could you describe from your perspective, what does it look like to balance the, the technology and kind of the, I want the information and want it now approach with the interpersonal uh, relationship between a doctor and their patient? It's interesting that our society that we live in in our country has really made it to that point where even if a person has a problem, I'll get, can, Doc, is there a pill for that? Well, no, not always is there a pill for it. And, and that is the same attitude that we'll see come into the exam room. Well, you told me that I need to lose weight. How can I quickly do this? I said, it's going to be just as slow as terms of how you gain the weight. We have to work through that. In terms of the technology part of it, that's what we're finding. People are coming in with their smartphones. They have their iPads. They actually see computers in the exam room. If I don't turn on my computer and actually do the exam and enter the data, people will question whether that information is correct or not. It was like, well, I did spend a few years in medical school, so I don't necessarily have to turn on the computer for everything. But at this point, people expect that. And so we need to make sure that we are holding true to their expectations. And technology really has been a change. And out of the 30 years of practice that I have, people are now receiving that information. They want it in a certain way and it needs to be delivered in a certain fashion. Even patient education, that information needs to show up in the patient portal so that they could go home and read about it later. They don't really want me to have to go through all of that information at the time that they're in the exam room. People are starting to embrace technology and doctors need to deliver it in such a way that it makes sense in their healthcare and that it's coming in a format that they can receive it and actually use that information so that we can improve the outcomes in their disease management state. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about that too and, and how technology has changed kind of the, the practice of medicine and now that expectation from patients too, like you said, you know, turning on the computer, they expect you to do that in the exam room and that, that's what we expect. Um, but I think there has been some pushback from uh, physicians that, you know, there's a lot of technology coming and a lot of change at once. And I know you've seen that throughout the, the time that you've been practicing and you've kind of ridden the wave and you've made it work for you. So could you describe to our listeners um, how they can embrace technology and maybe any efficiencies or, or any advice or words of wisdom that you might have for them? 
one of the things that I would say, and I had a situation to occur where the patient uh, came in to get a test result. And, and it was a pretty um, significant exam result. It was a mammogram that was not so good. And it was so much information that was coming at the patient. She literally got up and left out of the exam room. The, the, the thing about that, that we had to pay attention to, yes, I have the data, it's right there. There's the report, everything is there. But when all this was said and done, I needed to pay attention in terms of connecting with the patient. Well, she didn't leave out because of, of the, uh, the information that was given to her. She talked to me, we, I called her on the phone and she said, you know, it's, it was just so overwhelming. And, but it was that telephone conversation that occurred afterward. That's what a doctor does. That's what we do. We, we give that emotional um, embrace to say, yeah, I know it was a lot, but I got you, okay? And we're gonna make sure that you're okay and that the information that you have, that we use it for you, not to hurt you or make you feel better, that we use it for you. And that's what we're gonna to need to do with technology, to embrace people from the art and skills of a physician and, but also to say, I didn't lose you as a person with all this data coming in, then we're gonna make sure that it matches, that that information is there for you to take care of you. But as your physician, I'm also embracing you so that you feel the comfort that we have for you in order to make sure everything goes the best way that it could possibly be for you. Mm -hmm. And knowing that um, some of those who are listening might be in the, the health IT background or even, you know, clinicians who are interested in, in using health information technology more with that specific instance, with that patient, um, or even just more generalized, what does it look like to get that information? Is it easy? Is that what you're talking about and, and learning to make it work for you that you've figured out how to get that information quickly um, or, or are there still challenges that you see? You know, that is so important because the worst thing that could have happened is for the patient to be there and I not know the result. And because of us having our direct messaging system connected with the hospital and the um, North Carolina Health Information Exchange System, that information was coming into me and I could see it. But even better, I could use that information and then I immediately was able to schedule a referral to the surgeon who was going to see her. And the surgeon, he received my notes, he received the report. So we were exchanging information right there in the exam room. Now, mind you, she had already left. She was sitting in her car, already had her on the speakerphone in the car, and we were making the appointment. So we held true to what we said that we're gonna walk you through this process. And the surgeon was able to see the information and said, hey, I could see her in the morning. So when someone feels like that people care about me, that my doctors care about me, not only the primary care doctor, but the surgeon cares about me, that is the difference. But I needed to have that information. I needed to be able to export that file over to the surgeon immediately so that he could see it. And we were all connected in with this patient. That's a good feeling. That's a really good feeling. Yeah, the diagnosis is not the best one, but at least we know we're gonna do something to get the best outcome that we possibly can achieve. Mm -hmm. Years ago, something would have fell down in the cracks. Either the paperwork wouldn't have made it or the appointment wouldn't have been scheduled, but that's not what happened. All in 15 minutes, we were able to reassure this patient that we're gonna do the best thing that we can for you. And that is just so incredible to me, thinking about this patient and their time of need. Obviously, you know, a lot of information at once. Um, I can't even imagine how emotional that would be. And to hear how quickly this happened and to think about what so many of us in health IT and interoperability have been working towards and striving towards to cut down on that time to get a patient from one point to the next, you know, that's huge. Care coordination and um, and really supporting patients is, is huge. So it's incredible. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Oh, you're welcome. Because I really felt like if, if that's what technology is going to do for healthcare as a doctor, 
that's it. And if you want to put technology on steroids and it was working, it was working really well. But the goal here is we need it to work every time, mm -hmm. every time we want technology to be part of healthcare, not separate, not added on, not a distinct project, actually integrated in what we do every day. And, you know, that kind of sounds to me like a bit of a call to action to the health IT community, you know, to make sure it's integrated, to make sure it works every time, uh, to think about that that patient experience and that um, that interaction that you just had with multiple parties. So would there be any other words of advice or things that you would ask for from the health IT community to really make this work for clinicians so that we can hear more stories like this? That, absolutely, and I appreciate that. I would say is to continue to engage and connect with the providers, with the um, physicians who are, or who are giving these services to our to patients. Also get patient focus groups. Hear what people want their doctors to know. Patients will tell you, my doctor did not have the information I needed and I had to make another appointment or come back later. Listen to what the patients are saying. And then when the physicians are actually on the systems, make sure that it's, it's user friendly. I don't know a whole lot about technology, um, but I do know how to click a few buttons and I don't want to spend all my day clicking buttons either. So we really want to have good efficiency in our systems. We want to make sure that the IT developers, that they are hearing what we need and um, delivering it in such a way that it is user one of the things that distresses me is when I hear that doctors are only using 30% of their EHR system, 30%, what about the other 70%? Why are we not using it? And so let's go back and look at it. It sounds like a lot of thinking caps are going on. The problem is we're not getting the information to where it needs to be. So let's figure out what is that gap? Where is the disconnect? And let's get doctors, let, let's just be conservative. Hey, 50%, okay? Let's work our way to better use of technology in the exam room and, and just get to a point where we have increased efficiency that we can do the quality and that we have the access. And then the other component, we have so many physicians who are dropping out of healthcare, either burnt out, just tired, um, having technology fatigue. We don't wanna lose doctors for that. We actually want doctors to be able to feel more comfortable and really get the joy of practice, but not let technology be the hindrance, let technology be the tool to lead us in the right direction. Absolutely. I, I could not have said that any better. And I think, you know, over here at Direct Trust, we're very concerned with uh, the quadruple aim and, and supporting the quadruple aim, including what can we do to help minimize clinician burden um, and to ultimately increase that, that quality of care. And so thank you so much for sharing your advice and your wisdom and your stories with us today. And I'm curious, Dr. Smith, if you have any final thoughts or anything you'd like to add before we wrap up. Absolutely. The motto in our practice is the power of touch, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And everything that we design in our practice, we use that motto. And it doesn't matter what type of technology I'm bringing in. It has to be able to touch the patient and help me with delivering that physical care, that spiritual care, that emotional care. So technology, believe it or not, plays a big role. So that would be my last piece of advice. Focus on what we are here for in terms of our purpose. And if we do that, that will allow us to create systems that make sense. Wonderful. Dr. Smith, thank you so much for being with us today. And again, congratulations on your recognition as an interoperability hero. Thank you so much.